Hello champions, welcome to Jatai's Educational Academy. Today we're going to do another celebrity haircut and we're going to attempt to do Rihanna's undercut. So doing some research on uh, Rihanna's short undercut that she had, it's, it's very much a, a pixie in the, the Tinkerbell kind of vein where it's really cropped close underneath and the top is longer. And as I start to look at photos of this very iconic haircut, the only thing that um, I think you really got to pay attention to is the fact that all these cuts that I see of her, they always come to a point in the front. So the longest piece is right in the middle in the front and you can whip that back or forth. And as long as you get the texture right, I, I think this is a very, very straightforward kind of haircut. So we're going to do scissor cut underneath and then we're going to do razor on the top. There uh, are a couple of variations that she has where it's a little longer in the back and one I thought was really cool where it kind of goes to a point so in the back I think we're going to kind of go to a point to mimic the point in the front or at least we're going to try it so let's get started so we've gone through and pre-sectioned everything so I've taken from the center of the recession back to the quarter part from the quarter part I went straight down to just above the occipital bone in the back I did that on both sides so I'm going to start right here in the front and take an angle. Now that angled section that I'm going to take should be parallel to this front hairline. So whatever the front hairline is, that's the angle that I'm going to mirror when I take my first section. And then that way, as I start to work along the back, when I get to this hairline behind the back of the ear, everything will be parallel as I go towards the center. And it will be easy for me to match on the other side. So I'll lay my finger at the front of the hairline and then I'll comb the hair into my finger. So I'm combing it to the front of the hairline. I'll cut that as short as I want to cut it. Take a parallel section about the same size, the same angle, comb these two together. There's my guide. Cut that straight through. Third section same angle as we start to go through same angle I'll comb the second and the third section together there's my angle cut that cut that right through and down now once I get past the ear I'm still going to take the same angle. I'm just going to go all the way down to the nape. So I'm just elongating the same section. And that's the reason I took this angle as I started at the front. So it would seamlessly work into the back of the head. Comb this into the previously cut section. There's my guide. Cut that through. all the way down to the nape. Next section, comb this into the previously cut section. Cut this through, follow my guide. All the way <laughs> down to the nape. Now after I finish one side, I want to go through and cross check it. If I've done it properly, what will happen is it will be shorter in the front and gradually increase in length as I get to the center of the back. The smaller the sections that I take, the less increase of length that I'm going to have. The larger the sections that I take, the greater the increase of length that I'm going to develop. So I'll just go through, cross check that. Any little nibbles that need to be cleaned up, I'll clean up, clean up. Now this is just a cross checking and cutting off of any nibbles. If I see some big long gaps of section, then I need to go back and recut it the same way I did before. I don't want to cross cut, I just want to cross check. Now to clean this up over the ear, I'll just take a little scissor over comb. And just taper that in a little bit 
right by the ear. All right, so the same thing on the other side. Okay, so we finished cutting underneath. We got everything like we wanted it. I got it tapered in nice. Now I'm going to take the top section. I'm going to separate it from the front half of the head from the back half of the head. Now at this point, I'm going to take a parallel parting to the parting that I did in the beginning that separated the top from the bottom. So I want this section to come out exactly the same as I did the underneath section. And here I'm going to grab my feather plie razor because I want to make sure I got texture and I want to keep it soft. So I'm going to pull this section out and cut it the same as the parting using this as my guide length. Pull out, there's my guide length that starts to fall out of my hand. And then just work that up to my quarter part. Parallel section. I'm probably only going to do three sections here and then move to the other side. Pull that up. Get my razor stroke going. I'm using a fairly broad stroke because I want to keep the ends very, very soft with a lot of texture to it. I may even go through and channel some of that to make sure I get a lot of separation on the very tips. One more section right down the middle. Still pull this over to the side. Anything that hangs over, I'll take off. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So now we've got the back half of the head finished. And I'm going to check this and look at it and see if we've got the right texture to it. We've got a nice little point here in the middle, which I hope you can see, but you'll be able to see it for sure when it's dry. Now I'm going to use this length here on both sides and angle that forward to a lot of length in the front. And remember, I want everything pulled to this side so I leave a really strong point in the front. So we'll section that out. We'll look like this, parallel to my previous parting, which was the undercut. So I've got my section. I'm gonna use this as my short length guide, and then I'm gonna use a facial feature for my long length. The, the reference photo was showing that the longest length was hitting it about our lips. So I'm gonna angle that forward and see what we can get. I'll pull this straight out. There's my guide length I'm coming from. And I will slowly create an angle getting longer towards the face. And we look and say, okay, that's a little too long in the front. So let's take that front a little bit shorter. Continue our next section, elevate, there's our guide underneath, long strokes with the razor as I follow my underneath guide. Okay, our next section Looks like it's going to be about halfway through the head. Pulling this out. 
broad razor strokes. to keep everything soft. I'm gonna channel this to get some better separation. Remove some of that weight around the front. Now let's do the same on the other side. So this is our basic cut. We've got the undercut underneath. We've got the nice length on top. We've got some nice separation and texture to it. You've got a lot of versatility to it. And I think this is a really cool kind of haircut. So let's dry it and see how it looks. And we'll go from there. Here is our finished result, and I think overall it looks pretty good. We could probably use a little more texture on the top, but overall I think it's pretty good. So let me jump in here. Yesterday when I finished the haircut, I went home, I thought about it, I didn't like it. I thought that there were several things that I could really tighten up and fine tune and make it better. So I, I called my lovely client and asked her if she wouldn't mind coming back in and letting me tighten those things up. She was gracious enough to come in and spend her day with me, so here we are. Uh, first thing I'm going to go through and do is um, I want to cut my little tail off that I left here yesterday. Uh, I don't think that it really blended with the texture of the mannequin, so I'm going to go through and make it more traditional, like the pictures and the representation that we had. Uh, so that's going to be blended. I'm going to blend this in with our shortest piece underneath. Going to the piece that I already have here, I may go through and probably will go through, layer this top a little bit, and take some of the weight out of that. I felt that it was too long. And I definitely want to go through in the front and put a lot more texture into it and make that deeper and more separated. So we're going to do that as well. So we've separated the front of the head from the back of the head. And I'm going to take a parallel section to what we had undercut like we did before. And instead of me leaving this the same length all the way down to make sure I leave my little point in the back, I'm going to leave this length and then taper that in to where this part blends. I'm gonna go through and start tapering that in to where everything starts to blend here right at the occipital bone. So we have a disconnection here at the quarter part which will gradually start to blend into my length in the nape. Next section, comb that over. Last piece on the right side. Not a whole lot to cut there. Then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now to make sure I have an even amount of weight distribution right here at my heaviest point in the center, I'll take my Tokyo thinning scissor and just go through and make sure that that tapers up and out at a nice smooth kind of graduation. I can fine tune the shape with my thinning scissor and still keep the same kind of razor soft texture that we had going on. All right, so the next thing is I felt that this hair underneath was too thick and too blunt. 
So I'm going to go through and just trace it with my thinning scissors just to soften everything up underneath because I felt that that hair was just too blocky and too thick. So I'm just going to go through and on the very last eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, just thin just the tips to make sure that we have a nice smooth transition and the texture is not nearly as solid as it was before when I had point cut it. And I'll just keep going over it little by little until I have a nice smooth kind of softening of the texture underneath. So I still have my quarter part right here. I'm going to take a parallel section to the quarter part. I'm going to hold that straight up. And then with my feather styling razor, I'm going to lay the thumb against the blade and just take off some of that length. Since this has a guard, it's easy for me to do this kind of pinching technique without fear of cutting my thumb off. And I'll just go straight across there, take some of that off. I'll take the section behind it to make sure that that blends. Make sure everything blends back here. Very good. Now I'm going to take the first section that I cut, which was my guide. Take the next section on the top and the front, and I'm going to pull this hair back to my quarter part. There's my guide. Cut anything that hangs over. Next section parallel to the previous section that I just cut, if I can, right through there. Now I'm going to pull this back to the same point, back to my quarter part. Everything's going to get pulled back to my quarter part. So I have a stationary guide and I'm just pinching everything off with my razor that hangs over. Take the last section, pull everything back to my quarter part again. Anything that hangs over, we're just going to take off. And I'm cutting this shape round on top. Okay. Now we're going to comb everything forward, look at it, yeah we got a little bit more texture on the top. I like the way that we're blending in the back better. So now I just want to go through and the front, I want to create a deeper, more severe channel through here so I can create more separation. Straight across take some of that hair out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to take my plie razor, go in very, very deep, not so deep that I'm going to alfalfa the front, but I want to make a severe deep channel to not only thin that out, but to also get a lot more separation through there. Ah, much better. Same thing here. Now in this section, I do not want to pick up the section that I already cut. So I'm going to leave that out. 
Take my next section by itself. Pull that forward. Same sort of thing. Deep, severe channels. The reason I'm not picking up the section underneath is I don't need to thin that anymore. I just want to texturize this one section. Oh, that's much better. All right, and we're back. So our second attempt, I think, is much better than the first. Uh, the first one was fine, but it just needed a lot more softening of the undercut. I just felt that it was too thick and too bushy. Uh, we needed to take the tail off. I don't think it fit with this texture of hair, and I think it looks better and, and probably more stylish this way. It fits the head. It grips the head a little bit more. Um, we took a lot more layering through the top, which I think it really helped. It really needed that layering on the top. And I channeled this front a lot more because some of the reference pictures, the, the front was almost transparent with it being so PC. So putting more separation through there, channeling it much more severely, really helped that. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty content with this. I mean, the haircut's very versatile. I think it's her most iconic style that she's done. And uh, I hope that you like that. Please comment, let me know which celebrity you'd like for me to do next time. Also check out the Thai Academy. There's a plethora of good education on there from scissor cutting to razor cutting, all kinds of really great stuff. Please check it out and I will see you next time. Thanks. Hey.